Hey there, Ramon Osa with you here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to hit a good tennis serve, even if you're a beginner, even if you've never hit a serve before in your life. And if you're a seasoned veteran, try this progression out, it might just help you. Let's get started. All right, it's the most important shot in the game because it's the only shot that we have complete control over from start to finish. It's also a way to start dictating the point right from the get-go, we get to be in control. Not to mention the fact that if you never lose a service game, you can literally never lose a match, which is pretty cool. But it can also be the most complicated shot in the game because there's so many moving parts. So in this video, what I'm gonna show you is a very simple, very basic way to get you to start hitting the serve in immediately, which is the most important part. At the same time, I'm gonna be giving you a foundation that'll allow you to grow your serve without limits, and that's important. Now, as a disclaimer, this is not an exhaustive study of the serve, of every single component to the serve. That would take hours, and I have a lot of videos to scratch your itch if that's something that you're interested in on my channel, so feel free to snoop around there. But without further ado, let's get out to the court and get started. Now normally we serve from the baseline, but you and I are gonna start at the service line, and you'll see why in a second. All right, you wanna be balanced when you're standing here. There's a lot of variations with footwork on the serve with, you know, if you're gonna bring your feet together, are they gonna be further apart? For now, just make sure you're balanced. That's the most important thing. You don't wanna be wobbling or falling over like this. All right, step two is we're gonna start the racket up here like this. And we're gonna start by hitting the ball up and over the net and aiming for that box across from us. Now where we really want to get to is here, the contact point. It's going to be in front of your body and you're going to want to extend upward into the hit. So hold the racket with a grip that allows you to do that comfortably and make solid contact with the ball. Now there's some coaches that say the continental grip is the only grip we should ever use, period, end of sentence, end of story. And I used to think the same way, but then I realized that Boris Becker won a grand slam I think multiple Grand Slams, with an Eastern forehand grip. So if he can do it, why can't we, right? Now, if you're not sure what an Eastern forehand grip is or a Continental grip or any of that stuff, I made a whole video that explains the grips, and I'll link to that down in the description. So check that out if you have any questions. We want the strings of the racket facing where you want the ball to go because where the ball is going is going to be based mostly on wherever the strings are pointed when it makes contact with the ball. All right, step three is we're gonna to toss the ball in the zip code of where we wanna make contact, and we're gonna pop the ball up and aim for the box. Now, despite what it might look like on TV or when you watch other players, the serve is actually in upward motion. And by thinking up, we're gonna eventually start to create some topspin on the ball, which will cause the ball to arc high up over the net and be pulled down into the court. So we wanna start by hitting up. And a way I like to teach this to my beginners is tap, 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 toss and tap. The tapping is fun, it reinforces the quality contact we want to make, and you can sing along with your favorite tune while you do it. Just make sure you're in tune. Now step four is once you can make five in a row, I want you to move a step back. And then just keep moving back, doing your tap, 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 toss and hit until you're at the baseline. When you're ever in doubt, you know you have to make the serve in to start the point. So you can use this little tap serve just to get the point started if you're playing. Remember, the most important thing is to get the ball in the box when you're playing. Now, if you're worried about, oh, I'm gonna look bad, Ramon, you know, I'm just dinking the ball over, you're actually hardwiring the most important part of your serve into your motion, which is the contact point. And from there, a lot of things are possible. So go ahead and use this. Now, step five is we know you can hit up, so let's see if you can hit the ball down, shall we? So I want you to bounce the ball over the net like this. Couple of tips. First, make sure your arm's pretty loose. Second, toss the ball out in front of you a little further. And third, let the ball get a little bit lower so you have some leverage over the ball. It's really like you're whacking a drum. Okay, step six. Guess what? Once you can do that, you can hit up and you can hit down. So you automatically have everything in between. So let's just play with this. Staying in our starting position, let's hit a few balls with a follow through. When you hit your serve, typically your racket is gonna follow through. It's gonna go across your body and go towards your opposite hip pocket like this. So go ahead and hit a few balls and just let your arm be totally loose and let it go towards that hip pocket like this. Really important not to worry about where the ball is going here, on whether it's going in or not, yet. 
Just focus on staying loose and letting the follow through go where it wants to go. It's really like throwing a ball if you've ever played baseball, softball, or football. Do this for five minutes or so, and just to get the feeling of being totally loose. All right, step seven, let's set an intention to actually aim our serve now. And our thinking here is since you already have in your body the ability to hit the ball up, and you have the ability to hit the ball down, now we just have to play with your perception a little, change your focus, and gradually get you closer and closer to where you wanna be, which is ultimately hitting the ball in the box. So first, let's see if you can hit the opposite baseline. We know that's a long ways away, and it's past where we ultimately want the ball to land, which is in the box. So let your arm be totally loose and hit up on that ball. Just have fun and just see if you can get the ball to go towards the back baseline and do that for a few minutes. Okay, next let's pick another spot. How about the bottom of the net? Toss the ball up and see if you can hit the bottom of the net and do that for five or 10 minutes. Then how about no man's land, which is the middle of that big rectangle like you see in this picture. Okay, and then how about the top of the net? Okay, and finally go for the box. Now as you're using this, keep in mind that there's something hidden in what I just showed you. There's a lot of great instruction out there on YouTube and a lot of great technical advice. And a lot of the stuff can really help a lot of people. But I've found a lot of times that keeping things as simple as possible will actually get better results for people. Don't get me wrong, I still use technical instruction for my uh, students when I find that it's helpful for them, but this might just be the ticket that gets you hitting your serve with confidence and allowing you to grow without limits. Now, a lot of people have trouble with the toss where you're actually putting the ball up in the air so you can hit it. And I actually made a video that's called How to Perfect Your Toss in Five Minutes or Less. That's part of my complete serve building 2.0 training that you can have for free. Just go click the link down on below and uh, go grab it. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click the like button and let me know in the comments what topics you'd like me to cover in the future and I'd be happy to do that for you. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.